Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation. We have 6 plus BI equals 2x squared plus 8 divided by x plus 2i. B and x are real numbers and we're going to be solving for those values. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. For my first method, I'm going to go ahead and use cross multiplication because that is kind of obvious. Hopefully. So we're going to multiply 6 plus bi by x plus 2i and that should give us 2x squared plus 8. Remember, this is an alternative to division. You can also solve this problem by dividing complex numbers, even though the numerator is a real number. You can multiply by the conjugate x plus 2i and you'll get something similar. Now let's go ahead and distribute. We're going to get 6x plus 12i plus bxi plus 2b, or not 2b, i squared. i squared is negative 1, so this is going to give us minus 2b. And that equals 2x squared plus 8. Now let's go ahead and set the real parts equal real parts and same thing for the imaginary parts. 6x minus 2b plus 12 plus bx, that's going to be the imaginary part, equals 2x squared plus 8. But x is a real number, so 2x squared plus 8 is also a real number. So this has, doesn't have any imaginary parts, which means its imaginary part is 0. So this imaginary part must be 0, and the real part must be equal to 2x squared plus 8. Because we're dealing with a real number, the whole thing is the real part. Make sense? That's why all real numbers are also complex numbers. Now, from this, we get a system of equations. Let's go ahead and try to solve it. First, we're going to set 6x minus 2b equal to 2x squared plus 8. And then the second equation is going to give us something a little simpler. We can write it as bx equals negative 12. Okay, how do we solve this system? Probably by using substitution because elimination doesn't look uh, good to me. So let's go ahead and isolate one of the variables. So you have to think carefully. Should I isolate b or x? Now if you isolate x, you're going to have to square a fraction. And then you can try it. Or if I isolate b, it looks a little simpler. So let's go ahead and isolate b here. We, we can write it as negative 12 over x. And now we're going to plug it in here. 6x minus 2b, which is 2 times 12 over x. I put uh, minus times a minus is plus, equals 2x squared plus 8. And then from here we get 6x plus 24 over x equals 2x squared plus 8. Now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x. 6x squared plus 24 equals 2x cubed plus 8x. And let's put everything on the same side. Right-hand side is better. 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x minus 24 equals 0. Everything is divisible by 2. So let's divide. And we end up with this equation. Now, this equation is cubic. And you can use a cubic formula, uh, you know, but you don't need to do it because this is very much factorable. You can go ahead and factor out x squared here. This is factoring by grouping. Not all cubics are that way, but this one is. And then we can kind of take x minus 3 out and x squared plus 4 equals 0. Even though a cubic is supposed to have three complex solutions, we can't take complex non-real solutions. Why? Because x is a real number. We talked about it, right? x is real, so we can't go with this. So we can only go with this, which means x equals 3 is the only solution, which is nice. It has a unique solution. So let's go ahead and see if we can find b from here. Well, if bx is negative 12 and x is 3, then b must be negative 4. Easy, right? Once you find x, b is easy. Now what would happen if we isolated x instead? If we did isolate x, we would get negative 12 over b, and then we would just plug it in. We would get negative 72 over b, 
minus 2b equals 2 times 144 over b squared plus 8. And then by multiplying both sides by b squared, we would again get a cubic equation that would be cubic in b. And then we will solve for b and we would find negative 4. Doesn't matter about the same level of difficulty. Okay, great. So this was the first method we just cross multiplied. But again, as an alternative, you could just multiply by the conjugate, go uh, with x minus 2i. That way you'll get rid of the uh, fraction or simplify it. Okay? So that's one way to approach it. And our second method is kind of similar to that, but let's go ahead and do the second method. Okay, so we have 6 plus bi equals 2x squared plus 8 divided by x plus 2i. That was a plus sign, right? Okay, I believe so. Let me double check. Yes, it was a plus sign. And now, here's how the second method goes. Again, as a third approach, you can multiply by the conjugate, but that's not what I'm going to do. Instead of multiplying by x, plus, x minus 2i, I'm going to factor the numerator. Wait a minute. Are you talking about factoring this? Yes. I can first factor out a 2. And then, hopefully, you see what I see. x squared plus 4 is a sum of two squares. And that should almost always remind you the product of z and z bar. Remember? This product is always a sum of two squares and it's always a real number. So, we can do the following. We can factor sum of two squares using complex numbers. Here's how it goes. x squared plus 4 can be written as x squared minus 4i squared. And using difference of two squares, I'm able to factor this into x plus 2i times x minus 2i. Isn't that amazing? Well, in real algebra, sum of two squares is not always factorable. Sum of two fourth powers is a little different. Like if you have something like x to the fourth plus 1 or x to the fourth plus 1, these are factorable by Sophie Germain, but that's a different story. We're talking about squares here, and reals, you know, they don't allow us to factor it. But with complex numbers, it's a different thing. We can do it. And notice that x plus 2i cancels out, leaving us with 6 plus bi equals 2x minus 4i. And from here, if two complex numbers are equal, remember the uh, idea, the real parts are equal. So from here, 2x equals 6, which means x equals 3. And imaginary parts are equal, which means b is equal to negative 4. That gives us the same solution. And if you multiply by the conjugates, guess what? You would get the exact same thing. It would just be a little more straightforward because it's not always see, it's not always easy to see this factoring. But you should always look out for those things. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.